Hello children, welcome to our today's session of geography, lesson number 8, climate, vegetation and wildlife. So children, last session we have read, uh, we have seen the slides okay, of this uh, vegetation, natural vegetation, different types of forest, different types of uh, seasons and wildlife, say, uh, how to pres preserve the wildlife, how to conserve our forest. So, and today children we are going to read the lesson, but before reading the lesson we are going to watch some videos. Okay? Now we are going to watch the videos of vegetations then monsoons of India. Okay? So, shall we start? Natural vegetation refers to a plant community which has grown naturally without any human aid. The following major types of vegetation may be identified in our country. Tropical evergreen forests, tropical deciduous forests, tropical thorn forests and scrubs, montane forests, mangrove forests, tropical evergreen forests. These forests are found in the western Ghats, Lakshadweep. Andaman and Nicobar, upper parts of Assam and Tamil Nadu coast. The trees can reach a height of 60 meters or above as the region experiences a short dry season and rainfall more than 200 cm. Some of the important trees of this forest are ebony, mahogany, rosewood, rubber, and Sincona. Tropical deciduous forests. These forests are found along the foothills of the Himalayas, Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra, Jharkhand, West Odisha, Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, and Tamil Nadu. These forests are also called the monsoon forest. They are divided into moist and dry deciduous and are found in the region receiving rainfall between 70 cm and 200 cm. Teak, Bamboos, Sal, Shisham, People, Neem, Sandalwood, Kher, Kusum, Arjun, Mulberry are the commercially important species found here. Thorn forests and scrubs. This type of vegetation is found in the semi arid areas of Gujarat, Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh, Uttar Pradesh, and Haryana. The natural vegetation consists of thorny trees and bushes like acacia, palm, euphorbia and cacti. Trees are scattered and have long roots penetrating deep into the soil in order to get moisture. The stems are succulent enabling the conservation of moisture. Leaves are mostly thick and small to minimize the loss of moisture through evaporation. Montane forests In mountainous areas, natural vegetation changes with increasing altitude. Deciduous forests are found in the foothills of the Himalayas. Wet temperate forests like oaks and chestnuts, etc., are found between the altitude of 1000 to 2000 meter. On the foothills of the Himalayas, up to 1500 meters, the evergreen trees like sal, teak, bamboo, and cane grow abundantly. The temperate conifer trees like pine, fir, oak, maple, deodar, laurel spruce, Siddhar etc. are found on the higher slope between 1500 meters 
to 3,500 meters. At high altitudes, generally more than 3,600 meters, alpine grasslands are found. Mangrove forests The mangrove or tidal forests are found in the deltas of the Ganga, the Mahanadi, the Krishna, the Godavari and the Kaveri etc. The Sundarbans situated in the Ganga Brahmaputra Delta is the largest mangrove forest in the world. Thus, there is a wide range of natural vegetation in India which not only supports the environment of the country but also has a lot of economic value. So children, you have seen the video of natural vegetation, okay? Now we are going to see the video of monsoon winds, okay? Just see. The monsoons. How the monsoon winds appear? The monsoon winds are the strong seasonal winds that blow from cold to warm regions. The word monsoon is derived from the Arabic word mosim, which means season. These winds are actually large-scale land and sea breezes. These winds change direction with the seasons like from sea to land during one season and from land to sea during the other. Summer Monsoons When the sun is over the Tropic of Cancer, summers is experienced in Central Asia. As a result, the air above the land gets heated due to solar radiation and begins to rise, forming a low-pressure zone. However, the surrounding oceans and seas are rather cooler and thus have high pressure over them. Therefore, the air begins to blow from high to low pressure, that is, from the sea to land. The warm winds on shore absorb moisture as they move over the sea and bring rainfall. This is summer monsoon. In India, summer monsoon is experienced in the regions like Western Ghats, Maharashtra, Gujarat, North India, the Himalayas, Northeastern states and West Bengal. Winter Monsoons When the sun is over the Tropic of Capricorn, winter is experienced in Central Asia. As a result, the air above the land is cold and creates high pressure zone. However, the surrounding oceans and seas are rather warm and thus have low pressure over them. Therefore, the air begins to blow from land to sea. The dry cold winds offshore do not bring rainfall. This is winter monsoon. In India, winter monsoon is experienced in the regions like Tamil Nadu, Karnataka, Kerala, Lakshadweep and some parts of West Bengal, Odisha and Andhra Pradesh. So children you have seen now what is summer monsoon and winter monsoon. Now we are going to see what do you mean by advancing monsoon. The duration of the monsoon is between 100 to 120 days from early June to mid-September. The southwest monsoon occurs in two branches. After breaking on the southern part of the peninsula in early June, the branch known as the Arabian Sea reaches Mumbai around 10th of June. The other branch known as the Bay of Bengal moves northwards in the Bay of Bengal and spreads over most of Assam by the first week of June. On encountering the barrier of the Great Himalayan Range, it is deflected westwards along the Indo-Ganga Plains towards New Delhi. Thereafter, the two branches merge as a single current, bringing rain to the remaining parts of the North India 
in July. Hope you have understood, you have observed the videos very carefully, and you have enjoyed the videos also. Okay, so now we shall uh, we shall read the textbook. Open the page number lesson number eight, page fifty six. Okay, we are going to read the textbook, children. So you read in newspaper daily and watch on TV or hear others talking about weather. So you must know that weather. What do you mean by weather? Weather is a day-to-day -day changes in the atmosphere. It includes changes in temperature, rainfall, and sunlight. For example, as such, it may be hot or cold, sunny or cloudy weather. It may be windy or calm. So you must have noticed that. when it is hot continuously for several days you don't need any warm clothing you also like to eat or drink cold things in contrast there are days together you feel cold without woolen clothes so when it is very windy and chilly you would like to have something hot and hot to eat so now broadly the major seasons are cold weather season hot weather season that is summer season then south west monsoon season and seasons of retreating monsoon now we are going to see one by one cold weather season that is winter season it occurs from december to february in our country so during the winter season the sun rays they do not fall directly so the temperatures are quite low in northern part of india again hot weather season or summer season here the sun rays fall directly more or less directly in this region again temperature becomes very high and loose loose means hot and dry winds blow during this during the day now we'll see south west monsoon or rainy season this season is marked by the onset and advance of monsoon We have seen the video just now, children. Okay, Adva uh, advance monsoon. The winds blow from Arabian Sea and Bay of Bengal towards the land, and when they are blowing, they carry moisture with them. And when these winds they strike the mountain barriers, rainfall occurs. Now, seasons of retreating monsoon, or we can call it as autumn. So here, what happens? Here in this season, the wind. it moves back from the mainland to bay of bengal particularly the southern parts of india like tamil nadu and andhra pradesh they receive rainfall in this seasons now however the climate okay what do you mean by climate climate is the average weather conditions which have been measured over many years so the climate of india has been described as monsoon type okay monsoon is taken from arabic word mausam which means season due to india's location in tropical region most of the rain is brought by the monsoon winds so good monsoon means adequate rain and bountiful crop now the climate the climate of the place is affected by its location altitude distance from the sea level and relief so as i have told you location means where the play, where uh, means the place where it is located okay if it is located in the uh, like uh, if it is located in rajasthan then how will be the climate it will be hot if the place if a place is located in jammu kashmir then how the climate will be the climate will be cold again the climate also Uh, the climate of a place is also affected by altitude altitude means as we go up uh, higher and higher the temperature decreases children okay uh, sorry in the last uh, in the last slide in the last session uh, in the slides i have told you that the temperature decreases as we go up as the temperature increases so that slightly mistake i have done actually the temperature decreases as we go higher and higher okay means as we go high up as we go higher the temperature becomes cold and again the climate of a place is also affected by the from the distance of the sea level and reliefs so therefore we experience the differences in the climate of india like jaisalmer and bikaner in the deserts of rajasthan are hot 
while Kargil in Jammu and Kashmir are freezing cold. Dras and Kargil in Jammu Kashmir are freezing cold. Again, distance from the sea level means the coastal places like Mumbai, Kolkata, they experience equable or moderate climate and they are also very humid and place like uh, Mohsin Ram in Meghalaya, it receives the world's highest rainfall while in particular year it might not rain at all in Jaisalmer and Rajasthan. Okay, means Mohsin Ram in Meghalaya, it receives the world's highest rainfall. Now we will see what do you mean by natural vegetation. Variety of plants life in our surroundings we can see. So, there are also small plants called bushes, shrubs like cactus and flowering plants. Besides, there are many tall trees with branches and leaves like neem, mango or some which stand with few leaves such as palm. So, the grasses, shrubs and trees which grow on their own without the interference or help from human beings are called as natural vegetation. No, natural vegetation means the plants or trees or shrubs that grow on their own without interference of human beings are called as natural vegetation. Different types of natural vegetation are dependent on different climatic conditions among which the amount of rainfall is very important. So, due to the varied climatic conditions India has wide range of natural vegetation. Now, we will see why are forests necessary? So, forests are useful for us, they perform various functions, plants release oxygen that we breathe and absorb carbon dioxide. The roots of the plants bind the soil, thus they control the soil erosion. Forests provide us with timber, forests are the natural habitat of wildlife. Again, natural vegetation has been destroyed to a large extent because of the reckless cutting of trees. Okay? People are cutting the trees. So, we should plant more trees and we should protect the existing ones and make people aware of the importance of the trees. We can have special programs like Van Mahotsava to involve more people in making our earth green. These are the things which we get from the forest. Okay? Now, we will see wildlife. Forests are home to variety of wildlife. There are thousands of species of animals and large variety of reptiles, amphibians, mammals, birds, insects and worms which dwell in the forest. The tiger is our national animal. It is found in various parts of the country. Gir forest in Gujarat is the home of Asiatic lions. Elephants and one horned rhinoceros, they roam in the forest of Assam. Elephants are also found in Kerala and Karnataka. Camels and wild asses are found in the great Indian deserts and the run of Kutch. Run of Kutch. Wild goats, snow leopards, bears etc. are found in Himalayan region. Beside these, many other animals are found in our country such as money, uh, sorry, monkey, wolf, jackal, nilgai, cheetah, etc. India is equally rich in by, uh, sorry, bird life. Like animals, it is also rich in bird life. Peacock is our national bird. Other common birds are parrots, pigeons, mina, geese, bulbul and ducks. There are several bird sanctuaries which have been created to give birds their natural habitat. This provides the birds protection from hunters. There are several hundreds of species of snakes found in India. Cobras and krites are important among them. Due to cutting of forest and hunting, several species of wildlife of India are declining, declining rapidly. Many species have already become extinct. So, in order to protect them, many national parks, sanctuaries and biosphere reserves have been set up. The government has also started Project Tiger and Project Elephant to protect these animals. 
can you name some wildlife sanctuaries of india and locate them on map children i have told you some of the wildlife sanctuaries like periyar wildlife sanctuary in kerala then corbett national park in uttarakhand sundarban national park in west bengal again kaziranga in assam kanha national park in madhya pradesh you can also contribute in conserving the wildlife you can refuse to buy things okay made from the parts of bodies of animals such as their bones horns fur skins and feathers every year we observe wildlife week in the first week of october to create awareness of conserving the habitats of animal kingdom now migratory birds okay some birds such as pintail duck curlews flamingo osprey and little stint migrate to our country in winter season every year migrating means going from here to there okay one place to another so these birds they come to our country in the winter season smallest migratory bird lit bird little stint weighing as low as 15 gram from arctic regions travel over 8000 km to reach india so this is the smallest bird okay little stint weigh, weighing it weighs about 15 g and it uh, it migrates from arctic region and it travels to india which is almost 8000 km it takes to reach our country so children this is what we have uh, uh, read in this lesson now we are going to see the mcqs okay tick the correct answer and fill in the blanks the world's highest rainfalls occurs in which place mozinram tick here okay third one wild goats and snow leopards are found in himalaya region again third one during the southwest monsoon south west monsoon period the moisture laden winds blow from sea to land okay answer is sea to land now next one fill in the blanks hot and dry winds they are known as lu l double o lu hot and dry winds known as lu they blow during the day in the summer again the states of andhra pradesh and tamil nadu they receive a great amount of rainfall during the season of dash so during the season of retreating monsoon okay right here retreating monsoon third one dash forest in gujarat is the home of dash so here we can say gir forest okay g i r gir forest in gujarat is the home of is the home of asiatic lions so here we complete the lesson children i am going to show you a video of introduction to natural vegetation and wildlife okay come students let us explore natural vegetation and wildlife in india india is blessed with diverse plants birds and animals if we closely look at this map we can find that india is situated largely in the tropical zone This is the reason why India is a home to diverse temperatures and receives high rainfall. These conditions make India highly suitable for the growth of forests. India is one of the 12 mega biodiversity countries in the world. In India, we find 47,000 plant species based on which India is placed 10th in world. and fourth in asia in plant diversity there are about 15000 flowering plants which account for 6% of total flowering plants in the world apart from it india has variety of non flowering plants like algae ferns etc India also possesses 89,000 species of animals as well as 
rich variety of fish in fresh and marine waters. Specifically, plant life that is present in a particular region is known as flora. And the corresponding word for the animal life is fauna. Can you tell what does natural vegetation refer to? Does it refer to the plants you have planted in your garden? Well, the answer is no. Natural vegetation refers to plants or trees that are grown naturally without human help and has been left undisturbed by humans for a long time. This is also known as virgin vegetation. All types of crops we grow like wheat crop, maize crop, rice crop and orchards form a part of vegetation but they do not grow naturally. The virgin vegetation can also be classified into two types. Virgin vegetation which are purely Indian are known as endemic or indigenous vegetation such as people, neem, tamarind etc. Whereas those which have come from outside are known as exotic vegetation like eucalyptus, mangium, chickpea etc. Natural vegetation is very important since it provides shelter to many animals and birds, provides timber, provides medicinal plants, absorbs carbon dioxide and releases oxygen, checks flood and prevents soil erosion. So children you have seen the video okay of natural vegetation what is natural vegetation and why it is important okay so now we'll just recapitulate what we have, what we have studied in this lesson we have seen weather we have seen climate again we have seen the different seasons of in india that is cold weather hot weather southwest monsoon and retreating monsoon then we have seen climate okay what do you mean by climate and uh, the climate of place how it is affected it is affected by location altitude children here i have just made a mistake the temperature decreases with every increase in the height okay it is not uh, yeah here just one uh, uh, here we, can, we have to, one mistake i have done that is temperature decreases with every in with every increase in not in temp it, it is not temperature but it is with every increase in altitude okay increase in height uh, then next one we have seen the distance and last uh, last point is relief then we have seen the natural vegetation we have seen the video also okay what is natural vegetation and why it is important why natural vegetation is important and different types of forest we have gone through then we have seen the importance of forest and we have seen the wildlife what is wildlife and how we have we can conserve we can protect the animals and birds and what measures the government has taken to preserve the wildlife so here we end the lesson and here we uh, and this is this was the last lesson of this term of this geography subject uh, so go through the lessons read the lessons and go through the notes then will you meet uh, will meet you in the next session till then see you goodbye thank you